everyone. Hey! We are in Kota Kinabalu in Malaysia, which is... Wow, that must be a far off place. I've never heard of that before. Yes, it is. Is that on the planet Earth? <laughs> it's on the island of Borneo, but Borneo is made up of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. And we are on the west, northwest coast of uh, of Borneo. So. Home of the proboscis monkey. And the orangutan. <laughs> and lots of other things. Uh, it's beautiful. It's uh, very much jungle y. We're here to talk about China. Many of you think you have asked us for an update. So we um, apologize for it being as long as it has. We have been working from afar um, with e-learning. Our school started e-learning because the provinces and the Chinese government has restricted education to, um, to just e-learning, not allowing the students or the faculty to return to school. So we've been busy with that over the last few weeks. And so we apologize that we haven't had the time to give you an update. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize. But uh, we're ready to give you an update uh, today. The last time that we spoke to you, I believe we were talking about a tentative date of March 2nd to go back to school. But this past week, um, the government, the Shandong Education Bureau, sent out a communication that said that schools are not permitted to go back into session on the 2nd, as we had hoped, or after February is what they had said. And uh, Shandong is our province. It's like a state in the United States, and that's where Qingdao is. But uh, they did continue to mandate the use of e-learning and the requirement to uh, communicate and to continue learning with students through the means of using the internet, which has been uh, its own challenge, finding the proper platforms, the internet speed in China with a billion kids and parents on the internet yeah, has been challenging. It's overloaded. And the quarantines, system. everybody's on the internet. And quarantines, everyone's self-quarantined, so what else are you going to, going to do but to play on the internet? So that has really been a stressor on their system, but uh, we have been successful over the last few weeks to bring some education to the students. Well, and another thing is, maturity level, uh, self-motivation of high school students to get on there and to really work at it. It's different learning online and it's a challenge for the teachers. You know, it's its own special skill teaching online. So it's there's a learning curve for both, would yeah, you say? Absolutely. Yeah. So a little advice to the United States. I know many of you have been emailing, especially some tech directors that have said that they're getting on um, alert for, they're being alerted and on call for having the possibility of changing to e-learning at any moment. And I would just say, pick your platform very carefully. Make sure that you are very clear about what online learning looks like for faculty, for students, and for parents, and put those uh, documents uh, out there for the community to read and ensure that everyone is in agreement, because without that uh, central understanding, it could really uh, impact the effectiveness of learning uh, and just understanding for the entire community. Good point. Hey, let's do a magic trick for everybody real quick, okay? okay. One. Two, three. three! A lot of you have been asking what's going on on the ground in Qingdao or in China in general. And our friends that are there have said that they are really bored. Uh, they have all been on self-containment, not mandated, unless they have just flown into Qingdao. Which yeah, that's a recent thing. Happened, yes, very recently. And the reason why is because South Korea had the outbreak. And in Qingdao, we have many South Koreans who reside. And when the outbreak occurred, a number of Japanese as well as South Koreans flew into Qingdao. And until that point, Qingdao as a city was very stable with very few uh, cases of the coronavirus. And now that there's this massive influx of foreigners, the Qingdao government is very nervous. So they have uh, put some new regulations in place where anyone flying in now is on a pretty strict two-week quarantine. Hey babe, tell them about if you fly in from Seoul, what happens? Well, 
from what we hear, we don't know officially, but they say if you fly in from Seoul, they take everyone. First of all, you're not allowed off the airplane without everyone being temperature tested. If anyone on the aircraft it has a temperature above normal, they take the entire aircraft and move you into a hotel and you are there under surveillance uh, for two weeks and you can't leave. So that's uh, what's happening from Seoul. From other locations... So, so if, sorry to interrupt, yeah. so if we're flying back, we're gonna buy one of those temperature things, right? And we're gonna thermometer. go around, thermometer, and we're gonna go around and test everybody before they get on that plane. Yes, and we're going to have a and huge bottle of Tylenol and we're going to hand them out hand and them force out. feed everyone. Exactly. So if you're flying, what we've heard is if you're flying in from anywhere else and there are no temperatures on the airplane that are above normal, then everyone, I, I assume, can go home. But when you get home, depending on your building, perhaps, or depending on how management handles things, you could be quarantined for 14 days. So friends of ours, a friend of ours returned on Wednesday and had no quarantine. And then two friends returned today and they have a hard quarantine of 14 days, cannot leave their house. They, and they had to never, sign some documents. They had they? to sign documents and they had to agree that they wouldn't leave the premises. Uh, so or there would be stricter measures. Well, like, we don't know okay. exactly, but they yeah. they want to comply with what the government has requested, of course. Yeah. So it's for the betterment of everyone, if that's the case. Sure. But it's a shame because we're in a location that doesn't have the outbreak. So if we fly back, we're with a group of people that have not been exposed. And yet when we get back, the potential is we would have to undergo a 14 day quarantine. So doesn't really make going back all that enticing as you can imagine. Um, kind of house arrest, A little maybe. bit of house arrest, yeah. Plus we would be mandated <clears throat> everywhere we go to wear a mask. If any of you, and I'm sure you haven't worn a mask very long, but if you wear a mask, you know how uncomfortable it is, how frustrating it is to have it on, how it hurts your ears, how it pinches your nose if you actually wear it correctly. It is totally uncomfortable. So the mm. the motivation to actually leave it's the itchy. house, it's itchy, mm. you sweat under it. You, yeah. If you wear glasses, it actually fogs up your glasses because uh, of the air going being released yeah. up. It. We have some options uh, that we're faced with at this point. We are going to fly back to Kuala Lumpur to put us in a better position to fly back to Qingdao at some point. Option two, the US government, the CDC, um, all tell us not to fly to China, not to go to China. And if every time I go to the page kayak or any of the other booking sites to book a flight to China, it very clearly stipulates that you should not be going to China unless it's absolutely necessary to go there. You know, it reminds me of the sign, don't touch the stove, it's hot, right? Yep. You read it many, many times and then you touch it and it burns you, right? We are hoping not to touch the stove and to mm. remain in Or if Malaysia. we do, we won't get burnt by it. Correct. Or return when uh, things have relaxed a little bit more and we think we're heading to a, a better place where schools are more likely to begin. At this point, there's no announcement for the opening of schools. Um, living in Malaysia is very easy. We have everything that we possibly could need. We can live here for uh, our next apartment is $16 a night uh, with all the amenities that you could ever want or ask for. Uh, and then food is really inexpensive as well. So we could be living here for under $25 a day, which is reasonable, completely reasonable. And yeah, yeah and certainly makes the financial burden or it makes it not be a financial burden for us. So um, we can be here for the long term and uh, be wise about our spending. You know what? You're doing a great job, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. We wanted to just add a couple of things about uh, living abroad and being nomadic and some of the great things about it and some of the challenges. So I'll start with some of the challenges. Uh, we lose things every time we move from one location to the next. It no matter how much we tear apart a room to ensure that we've gotten everything, we seem to always lose something. Or we'll misplace them in a funny place in our bag or something like that, and we end up finding it six months later. Like now, we right? donate to every hotel that we go to or yeah. Airbnb. There's no chance of getting it back once you're gone. We run out of items like prescriptions or 
I love power bars, power bars, zip fizz. For those of you who know me, I do zip fizz every day. I have not been on zip fizz for a couple of weeks, which is just heartbreaking. Um, but you're through the cold turkey already. But I'm through the cold turkey, so I'm doing okay. We both need haircuts, and I desperately need some color in my hair. The oh grays my are coming through. Look at this bright wig right here I've got going. <laughs> Thinking about if it's a few more months, maybe doing dreadlocks. What do you think? Uh, absolutely. I think that would look. Uh, Sorry, awesome. mom. I don't think you'll like that. <laughs> Until this week, we had to do our laundry ad hoc in a bathtub in a sink, and that was not ideal. Uh, but this week has been glorious. We've had a wash machine we've had a refrigerator um, it has been amazing Airbnb is the best so uh, we're really happy about that and um, unfortunately they're not sponsoring us right now no <laughs> um, and also you know just sometimes we wish we could make a salad or just something yeah. simple anything else that's hard being exiled and nomadic uh, sunburn uh, <laughs> during winter time I know the world's smallest violin is playing for us right now, but yeah, that's a look, get, get a little edgy. It's really and, hot here. But <laughs> life is really hard. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, let's talk about easy yeah. things. We love not using a VPN. It is the best thing ever. Yay! We can get on the internet and go to any website we want, and we are not controlled or monitored. It is fabulous, and the internet speed is yeah, lightning yeah. fast here. Good point. So we are able to get so much more done and be more efficient, more effective, because we don't have a VPN. It's yeah. glorious, absolutely yes. amazing. We have stores all around us. We're right on top of a massive mall, and the mall has everything and anything we need. We have the oh, yeah. freedom to come and go as Two we please. Two swimming pools. Two swimming pools. We don't need to wear a mask, goggles, and gloves to go anywhere. Warm temperatures, beautiful palm trees, um, just time together that we get, that we're not distracted by the things that we have in our home or the tasks that await us when we get back. Um, we're thankful that we're healthy. We're meeting a ton of people, a lot of uh, teachers in the same situation that we're in who are nomadic as well. And it's just been fun kind of commiserating and, and just having a, a bond with them because we're all in the same situation. So um, that's been really pleasant. And um, we're really grateful for this time in Malaysia. The people here have been amazing. The food is absolutely outstanding. Yeah, and a meal Everything. calls, you can fill up a plate with delicious, Malay home cooking like your Malaysian grandmother that you don't have just cooked for you and it's like two to three dollars yeah and the food's delicious it's very Indian-esque yeah. so and we love curries. Indian food we're overdosing on roti yeah, yeah. and naan and Indian food and food when it gets really tough we can go to the BK lounge that's Burger King <laughs> why because the french fries are so much better than mcdonald's comment down below if you agree with me one of the great truths in life isn't it yeah and we're just here to speak truth and love thank you burger king so don't feel sorry for us we are doing great we're healthy we're happy and um, other than a big decision that's weighing on us as to when we go back really uh, everything is fine here and borneo is beautiful put it on your list of places that you want to travel to you'll see several videos coming from us in the next few weeks uh, about our travels here so make sure to see those Do you want to talk a little bit about the situation um, how uncertain it is how nobody really knows when this thing's gonna end yeah I think and how it creates attention both on our part and schools part the government's part and we're all kind of tense because we're in uncharted territory. I mean, sure there was SARS 10 years ago, but a lot of people haven't been through it and this is a little bit different. And um, there's people's safety at, and their education that's in play right now. And the schools are all thinking, well, we're paying these teachers, but they're not in China. But there's no reason for us to be in China because we don't have any kids there so the yeah but we don't want to go back because of the quarantine issues and sure if we knew we we're gonna be teaching in two weeks uh, we would go back for the two-week quarantine but 
who knows? I could mean, be it could month. be could be mid-April before we go back. So there's well, always... Well, Japan has closed its schools yeah. for a month. Hong Kong, Mongolia, many places have closed the schools. I think, I think the the greatest morale drop was thinking we could go back on the second, go back to school on the second of March, and then that being delayed again, I think was very very hard on a lot of teachers. I was talking to one of my friends who's a head of school in Qingdao, and he was just saying that they were really hopeful and that announcement just deflated them and it's having to re yeah. just reset your set your expectations i would much rather be back in Qingdao right now teaching because it's a lot easier teaching in a classroom setting than it is online yeah. and i just love the kids and the interaction that we have the and seeing amazing. their faces and you just don't get that um yeah, the amount of hours that teachers are working yeah. is, is far greater now it is. because uh, students are in touch with them 24-7 yeah. uh, by WeChat and by messaging because they're not understanding something or they have to chase them down because they're not turning in assignments or showing up on, on the live yeah. broadcast. And in school, you can chase them down much more easily. But here, there's, uh, it's, you know, when you're not seeing them, it's much more difficult. Yeah, we're having a great time in Malaysia, but don't get us wrong, we would still rather be back and have things. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. We wish we were back at Be good for work. everybody, but it's, healthy it's to not, work. and it's creating tension, and we're, we just have to have a lot of patience and a lot of grace uh, getting through this, and we're all going to get through this, and we can say we're not dead by then. Hey, we were in China or associated with China when, when the coronavirus broke out. Yeah. So, so part we'll, of history. We'll keep you updated this week as we make our decisions as to whether yep. we return or when, not whether, when we return. And um, we'll drop you another video. Of course, when we do return, we will try and get as much video as we can yeah. of the, our experience on the plane and landing and all of that to let you see what's happening on the ground. So until then, thanks for your support and your encouragement and your constant messages and concern for us. We really appreciate it and we love you all. Yeah, thanks for watching the Blown Away channel. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you comment and stay in touch, everybody. And subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Thank thanks. Bye-bye.